All right guys, here is how I currently keep my full size 35 inch spare tire in the bed. And as you can see, that dog just ain't gonna hunt. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel everyone. If this is your first time stopping by, make sure you subscribe now. As you can see, having a full size spare in the bed stored like this takes up just about all of your bed space. If you're just going off roading, yeah, you still have plenty of room out here to put like a portable toolbox or stuff like that. But if you're going camping, and off-roading at the same time, this is not gonna work. It just eats up way too much space. So today I'm gonna do a little bit of rearranging. I'm gonna redecorate. <laughs> oh. On the molly panels here to get this full-size spare mounted vertically perpendicular on the back or front wall of the bed right there, depending on how you look at it, to free up some floor space. Okay guys, so with the tire actually out of the way so you guys can see, here's how I have my stuff set up. I keep my Rotopax fuel packs right here in the corner. Not currently mounted, but I keep my water port right there, a dry storage roto packs, power tank of course, and then axe or shovel down here. I don't keep all of this stuff in the bed at all times just because I don't wanna have to worry about securing it, but the plan is to go ahead and clear off the back wall, get the power tank bracket relocated over here to this corner. Should still have plenty of room to reach all four tires for that. And take my dry storage roto packs and attach it with a new Rotopax attachment device, like extension I'll show you in just a second, on top of my fuel packs. And what I like about doing that is the current handle, I guess, on the Rotopax for the dry storage is lockable. So once I put that sandwich that on top of this, I'll be able to keep that on the truck at all times and have that locked and secured. Okay, so with the stub part of whatever like the base platform is for my roto packs, in this case my fuel packs, I'm going to take the new extension right here and mount this perpendicularly. You have the small piece right here that spins freely with two notches on the back. Make sure those are just lined up with the notches right here to hold that in place. If you guys are interested in something like this, I will put a link for it in the description below, but just make sure you mount this perpendicularly so it's tight. And just to clarify real quick, mount it so the smaller piece is perpendicular and the other one is, I guess, on the same plane. Because of course, when I get my dry one right here, you can see that's how the slot is. It's horizontal, not vertical. So then all I'm gonna do, it feels like it's like barely hanging on there, like half overlap. I'm gonna go ahead and take this one and this one, both pieces, the, the one that slides through right there, Again, make sure it goes over the two mounds right there to hold it secure. This entire thing will go on there perpendicularly. And this is the one that locks, so I'll get that locked up and secured in just a second. All you gotta do is jiggle it. You just get it in there, jiggle it, jiggle it, jiggle it. Jiggle it. Okay, so got this left side mostly freed up. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the stalk right here since I'm no longer using that. It is just bolted on a few stainless steel bolts down here, no big deal. And I have about a bazillion quick fist mounted, one, two, three, and four over there. Go ahead and just get those unscrewed from the back so they're not in the way of the tire. And I, of course, dropped one of the nuts behind the molly panel right here. So instead of taking that out, here's a tool you guys need if you don't have it already, telescoping magnetic pickup tool, usually about seven bucks, link below, grab one. It makes your life that much easier. Okay, so I got the mount for the Rotopax stuff removed. And on second thought, I think I'm gonna leave the four quick fist I have on here just because like with the center of the tire right here, they shouldn't be in the way. I'll see if these ones hit, but otherwise I'm just gonna leave them as is. So next part, go ahead and take off the power tank bracket, which might be fun. I might have to remove the molly panel for that. I forgot how I have it attached on the back, so we will see. Okay, so it turns out to get to the back of all the bolts holding the bracket on here, I have to take the molly panel off. To take the molly panel off, I have to take the top pieces of the bed sides off, just the plastic right here. To take the top pieces of these off, I had to take my best top super top off. So FML, it is what it is. Actually, it's not too bad because with the topper off, I can now easily take the roof rack off, which I'm flirting with the idea of doing so I can peel the vinyl off of the center of the truck here on the roof since I've already done the hood and the tailgate to give it that nice black look down the side. So go ahead and disassemble all this, get this removed. But before I actually remove this, I'm gonna measure how high it sticks off off the bottom because it's perfect placement as far as where the power tank sits so I know how high to put it over here on the new location. And we are making progress. I am using a stainless steel T-nut here in the bed rail for the top 
connection point for the bracket and then you can see it's loose but once I get that sort of I guess parallel to the bottom of the bed there is one hole one of these holes in the molly rack so I don't have to drill anything I should be able to get my socket wrench back there to hold the nylock while I attach that from the front not saying it's gonna be easy but I'd rather do it that way otherwise I'll have to take this molly panel off and attach that bolt then reinstall it and get the bolt up on the t-rail installed but that is where we are and in case some of you are wondering why I have it on this side versus the driver's side not like I'm really gonna be running this thing all the time I just put the power tank on the truck when I'm going off-road and I figured it'll block a little view back here but when the topper is on the truck this corner sort of blocked anyway plus I'd rather have that weight on the passenger side since taco lean so that's why I went with passenger side versus driver's side and finally got the bracket mounted. I'll show you the power tank mounted in just a little bit. Again, everything else buttoned up. Got the back wall put on. Before I tighten the top with all of the, like the top rail with all the hardware, I am going to slide in two of these stainless steel T-nuts. This is a kit that actually comes with a hex bolt, the stainless steel also, very sweet. I think you get four of these. I'll put a link for these down in the description below. Certainly useful. I'm gonna slide those in, I guess sort of there are five bolts across the top that hold the molly panel in. I'll sort of do it in between. I'll just split the middle on either side and those will be used to hold some D-rings or V-rings, whatever you want to call them. So let me get this all put back together. And here you guys can see I have the tire mounted with a pretty heavy duty ratchet strap. And I just wanted to show you guys how it looks. I'm getting ready to put the best top super top back on, of course. I wanted to show you what it looks like like this in case you guys wanted to run something similar and you didn't have a topper or something like that. Got my power tank mounted over here and I have an extra strap right here because I have this one horizontal as you can see. I was thinking about using the other one like sort of like mount it on either lower corner here on the molly rack and sort of go up and over to pull it down from the top I guess also to just secure it. Just with the horizontal strap this is surprisingly secure. Just took it on a test drive, did some higher speed turns just to test it out, you know, sort of like left to right turns in a parking lot. It went fine. And you can see I can't even move it like using my body weight, which isn't massive, but still. I think part of the reason it's so secure is it looks like this is a 35 inch tire or the metric equivalent, 315, 75, R16. And the center point looks like it lines up almost perfectly with the bed rail back there. So where I have the T-nuts and the big ratchet strap mounted, is directly on the center line of the tire which of course is what you want for the most stability so already loving this and i'll show you a shot from the inside because yes obviously it blocks a lot of the rear view but it doesn't block as much as i expected it to block okay guys so there you can see i still need to put the best top super top on but there is the rear view obviously blocks the center however you can still see movement through i guess like the spokes on the wheel and that might help out more so at night so you can at least see some parts of like headlights and stuff like that. Plenty of vision on either side of the tire on the left and right and I am pleased with that. And in case you forgot, I have the Anytime front and rear camera mod done so I can just run it on my rear camera all the time which of course just turns on your backup camera just to give me like a little better view of my surroundings. All in all, very pleased with the setup so far. Now let's get that super top back on. And with this setup, as you can see, I still got booty for days is wrong i mean bed space for days and here is the final setup with the super top back on a power tank mounted in the corner of course i think i just gave myself a hernia i'm not gonna lie i was a little worried that the top of the best top super top would be contacting the top of the tire but looks like i've got at least i don't know four inches to spare right there so 37s this could work for 37s in the future but don't worry that's at least three weeks away or so so obviously i have the tire mounted as near the center of the molly panel on the back wall as possible i suppose if i wanted a little extra visibility i could slide it either to the driver or passenger side i don't know it looks like i have about six inches or so to move it either way but i figure like this again not like i'm running this all the time just when I go wheeling, but I figure like this, at least the weight's like centered up on the bed, so it's not gonna, I don't know, give that much extra like weight that's elevated over the center of gravity to like help the truck lean either way. But if I wanted that extra visibility, that is certainly an option I could do. So you know what to do. Go ahead and comment below. Let me know what you think of the setup. Pumped with all the floor space I now have back. 
All right, everybody, that will do it for the full-size spare tire bed relocation video. Comment below, let me know what you think of the setup and if you plan on doing something similar. As always, thank you so much for supporting the channel by watching this video. Enjoy the rest of your week, and I'll see you in the next video.